name's Mari Johnson, and I'm the former head of the NDIA Technology Authority. I'm a carer and advocate of family with disability interacting with the NDIS. Uh, my focus is the NDIA's lack of capability to implement and the consequences of a bill that recklessly ignores this fact and with zero mention of co-design. Just six months ago, the Joint Standing Committee documented a lack of NDIA organisational capability, overwhelming complexity, significant cultural deficits and unlawfulness. Also in the past 12 months, the ANAO has been scathing of the NDIA's risk management, data security and system controls. The NDIA systems are defective and inaccessible and the NDIA exhibits a chronic lack of command of data security. In relation to the NDIS budget calculation instrument concept, um, I'd like to bring the committee's attention to Services Australia $200 million entitlement calculation engine that was dumped by this government and the dumped Department of Home Affairs $250 million permissions capability platform. The NDIS budget calculation instrument on which this whole bill rests is a recast of these dumped calculation programs. All three are essentially the same concept. So why would the government expect a different outcome for the NDIS budget calculation instrument when half a billion dollars has already been wasted on multiple abandoned attempts at the same concept? This bill puts an, alg puts an algorithm, the budget calculation instrument, yet to be defined beyond the reach of administrative review. This is a terrifying world first. What is proposed in this bill requires a high performance, skilled, customer focused human workforce capability, optimal systems performance, strong regulated data integrity, clear, consistent and documented business processes and payment integrity to the level of Australia's financial system. None of this exists. The NDIA does not have the capability and is certainly not fit to execute the implementation of the scale of the changes proposed in this bill. The NDIS is already in crisis and it will implode. I believe the bill is defective and should be rejected, not only because it is inconsistent with human rights, but the naivety around implementation presents a national security challenge to this critical part of Australia's infrastructure. Thank you. I Thank want you. to go to uh, Ms Johnson. Um, you have brought the committee's attention to the budget calculation <laughs> instrument and referenced a number of previous uh, examples of where that has has failed. Um, can you uh, specify for us the, the 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 piece of the bill that you're referring to there when you're talking about the budget calculation instrument? Uh, and just summarise the, the previous examples. Yeah, so it will be a bespoke um, creation uh, of something that doesn't that doesn't exist and that is not reviewable. Um, that is actually really, really concerning. Uh, I don't believe there is any other instance of that in the world where such an instrument is not uh, not reviewable. Um, the two examples I gave was the um, entitlement calculation engine from Services Australia, um, which um, uh, was um, dumped by the government. Um, and I have to say um, that was a good decision. Um, that was $200 million of investment over, over many, many years. And I think for that $200 million, Services Australia achieved about 700, um, 700 individual calculations out of millions that they would otherwise be wanting to do. So there's something pretty fundamentally wrong with uh, what goes on in these um, uh, in these types of concepts. Similarly, for Department of Home Affairs, uh, that was a $250 million permission capability platform. Now I've worked in um, immigration as it was. So what this does, it takes into account um, different factors relating to um, visa uh, visa entitlements, if you like, uh, whether there's uh, work rights and so forth. So both of these um, were outsourced to um, uh, technology firms to do this. The fundamental problem with both of them is that uh, they were not co-designed. And, um, uh, and so that gets back to what we're saying here is the need for co-design is not just about 
making everybody feel good or making things look nice. It's actually about how things work. Um, and co-design by its very nature uh, is about understanding the risk um, of whatever it is that um, is the subject of, of the co-design. So I call this out as a, an alert uh, to the committee that when I was reading um, the draft bill and I saw this, it occurred to me that the committee at least should um, be alerted to these other similar uh, attempts at doing this, all up over half a billion dollars. And there is a real question as to why the NDIA would have a different outcome when we already know that the current method of um, the uh, typical support packages and the, the rest of their technologies, including this, uh, the PACE program, are so fundamentally problematic. So, so if this doesn't work, <laughs> which I doubt it will, um, then the future of the NDIS uh, is grim.